Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. As you've seen, I've now got the production version of the uh, H3 2D gimbal. Uh, it's been out for a week or two now. This actually isn't mine, this is one of the members from the page I started on Facebook, the uh, DJI Phantom Owners page, uh, and he wants someone to fit it to his Phantom. So that's what I'm gonna do today, and uh, I'm gonna show you me installing it and uh, showing you it, the uh, pitch and tilt work. So uh, let's get on with it. So as you can see here, this is uh, Dave's box where he keeps his Phantom. Uh, he's dropped his whole kit off basically. He's got his Phantom which he sprayed black. He's got a, um, some sort of uh, diversity monitor. I think he got that from quadcopters. Uh, some lipo checkers. A water boy. GoPro Hero 3. And, and some sort of uh, coin purse. But anyway, let's uh, take this out and uh, have a look what he's done to it. Uh, looks like I'll have to remove all this off of here. He's put some sort of anti-vibration mount on there. So I'll remove that and uh, let's put this uh, Zemuse straight in. Okay, so here's Dave's Phantom. Uh, as you can see, he's sprayed it all black, made it look a bit mean. Uh, let's put on the uh, Zemuse. As you can see, we've got the main body here with the GoPro port on. My beta version didn't have this, unfortunately. Uh, they seem to give you a couple of options with the isolation mounts. I'm just going to use the ones that are already on there. Uh, there's the uh, PMU version 2, which isn't actually included with the um, Zemuse kit for some reason, which is a bit strange. Uh, don't know why DJI didn't include it. And the Zemuse H3 2D uh, controller. So let's uh, fit this in. Okay, first step, let's remove all the props. Okay, that's done. Uh, I'm going to remove Dave's uh, homemade isolation mounts here. Dave's made a bit of a mess of this, so I'll have to give it a little bit of a clean up, but I don't want to take his paint off. Okay, time to take the uh, shell apart. Uh, I do apologise for the black on black contrast, but there's not much I can do about that at the moment. Uh, you're going to need a very small Phillips screwdriver, and I think it was a 1.5mm Allen key. Uh, take off all of the uh, Allen keys and then the um, Phillips screws which is one on each, the very tip of each arm. Okay, all the screws are now removed. Let's lift the top off. Oh, it's messy in here. Bit of overspray there, Dave. So from the top lid here, you've got your GPS unit here, and this is the cable for the GPS. First thing you're gonna do is unplug that. Bit of a tight squeeze. And there we go. The cable running down just runs to the, your leg, that's your um, digital compass. You don't need to worry about that. Okay, so the next step is to take our NASA PMU V2. Uh, this doesn't come included with the kit for some reason, but anyway, you need to make sure you get one of these. Uh, what we're going to do is solder this into our quad. Uh, on my beta version, I use this cable here. Uh, everyone's got this cable, it's just a dead cable, it doesn't go anywhere. It's just got a 12 volt power supply from your battery. But we'll follow uh, DJI's example and we'll solder it straight onto the board here. We're going to put the red to the red and the black to the grey. Okay, let's solder on our connections onto here. Okay, so we've got a nice solid solder on that red now. Let's just put the uh, black onto the grey. And that is that. Always give it a good test, give it a good pull. Make sure you've got a nice strong solder connection on there. And that's your PMU fitted. Okay, so now we're going to put our Zemus on. Uh, we need to solder the power on for them as well. Uh, looking at the quad, this is the left side, there's the right. Here's our front door, if you want to call it that. Uh, here's where we've already made our connection to our PMU V2. Uh, we're going to put our Zemus controller on these connections here on the CSC. Uh, the VCC will take the red and the GMD, which stands for ground, will take the black. So let's solder these on. And that's our Zemus now fitted on there. Nice and snug as before. Looking good. So there's the Zemus and the PMD. 
Now, DJI would instruct you to uh, cover over these uh, connections. You don't really need to, as far as I'm aware, because uh, your connections aren't touching if you've done good soldering anyway, so uh, you shouldn't have a problem. But DJI do recommend that for some reason you've got to take special blue tape. And I'm only kidding, you can use any tape really, and uh, just put it across there just to stop anything pushing down onto those uh, raised uh, solder connections that you've already made. But remember, it's got to be blue tape. Red tape doesn't work. So just where I uh, soldered up, I'm just going to put a little bit of tape over it, as recommended. Okie dokie, next step, let's uh, get our cables here. And we're going to take this long uh, power and data cable here. Now you have to kind of scrunch this in a funny kind of way. Let me just focus in on that. See how it's flat? You need to kind of twist it and make it kind of pointy with the cable. And now this needs to go down one of the uh, legs. Uh, now you have these rubber bits, which I'll show you now. Uh, just here, by right at the start of the uh, C, you've got like a uh, rubber stopper. You can just push that through, and there you can see we've got a hole now. And we're going to stick the uh, cable up through there and into the uh, phantom. See, I'll just pull it through here, and the other end goes straight out there. Okay, so the next step is to take our PMU. We're going to unplug the plug, which is in X3 at the moment. Now, if you look, if you're not familiar with the NASA, you've got X3, X2, X1, and then you've got all your motors here M1s up to F2s there for your gimbals. Uh, if you're using like a servo driven gimbal, but we're not. But anyway, uh, pull out the plug for the X3. And what we will do is the plug, the servo plug, which is on the PMU, will then plug into what was already in the X3. And you just plug it in with the uh, brown tab at the very top, uh, sorry, the brown cable at the very top. Then again, sticking with the uh, PMU, you've got the grey cable here. This will actually go in place of where you pulled out the GPS from the lid earlier. So plug that in, you've got two little tabs at the bottom, they go facing down push that in then what you'll do is the GPS which you pulled out the first time will then plug into the PMU like so and that's that all plugged in now now from those cables that are separated earlier you've got this uh, CAN bus cable you just plug one end into the PMU like so and then the other end plugs into your Zenmuse controller like so. Then that black cable that we threaded through earlier plugs into your Zemmuse controller as well. You see here we've got a G8. So you just plug it into there. Okay, so the next step is to close all the lid and put all these little boxes inside. Uh, but if you want to be uh, getting a live link from your GoPro camera, uh, you can use the third cable that came in the kit. This plugs into your Zemmuse controller here. Like so. Uh, out of this, the yellow is the video, then you've got a red for uh, 12 volt and a uh, black for ground. So that's going to be your video which will come out live through the GoPro, uh, and through the gimbal and then uh, through this cable and out here. So you can then plug this maybe into a uh, fast shark transmitter or a transmitter of your choice and your video link will be sent live straight back. Okay, so that's all squeezed inside there now. Uh, all we have to do is put our Allen keys back in these locations and put our screws on the very ends and uh, that will be this show complete. Unit now sealed, just check your motors, make sure uh, nothing's rubbing on them, uh, meaning the plastic is touching, meaning your shell's a bit uh, skew if, but we're all good here. As you see, we've got our cable coming out there, which is going to go to our Zemmuse, and we've got our video out. Let's uh, now put this little piece on the top here, you have this little kind of T-bar here, that'll go to the back, so we're going to put this on just like so. You should have a little screw and a washer set in here. So let's take our little sort of screws and uh, screw that piece on. Now the, you'll see that the central hole here is actually blocked by this part, but if you just push down slightly you'll see that it opens up and you can then screw in this area. That's our bracket now mounted nice and safe. Okay, now to put the uh, main bit of the gimbal on. Uh, I'll just zoom out a little bit here. 
first thing you need to do is put this cable in. It's important that you put this cable in first because once you put this uh, gimbal onto your mount there, it's incredibly hard to put it on and you may damage it. So uh, that was the mistake I made when I first done it with the beta version. So make sure you put the cable in first, like so. Okay, so I've took the screws out of this bag here, which says uh, M2 5 star 5. Uh, we're going to put a screw straight through here into the vibration dampener. Uh, it takes two screws, so uh, let's plug this in now. Okay, so there we have our gimbal fitted. Now the temptation might be to actually power this up now and see it working. But I would advise against doing that. Make sure you have a GoPro inside of here before doing that. Uh, these are built uh, to a, a, such a standard and such a, uh, a fine specific ratio that you need the weight of the GoPro to be in there. Otherwise you uh, stand a chance of burning out your uh, roll motor there. So uh, I'm going to grab Dave's uh, GoPro out of the case and uh, we'll screw this in. Okay, so as you can see we've got the uh, data port on the back which should plug straight into here. And it does very nicely. Okay, and we'll fit the uh, little brace on here, which will keep the GoPro on and stop it from falling. So you're going to want to use the screws after this. It's the M2, and it says 5 star 6 dot 3. Uh, and this will hold the bracket on. And there's our Zemus fully installed on the DJI Phantom. All that's left to do now is just uh, tuck some more of this cable in inside here. Uh, I've left the uh, video out from the uh, to go to a transmitter. I'll put some tape over them, and it's up to Dave if he wants to use them or not. So let me just uh, tidy this up a little bit. Okay, so done a little bit of tidying up with the cables. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and do the first official test of uh, Dave's gimbal. As you can see, I've got the standard controller here, which I'll turn on. I haven't done this. Uh, I haven't turned this on yet, so uh, this will be the actual first official turn on of the gimbal, so uh, let's see what happens. See the GoPro lights come on to say it's charging. And there we go, looks like it's on. Doing its thing. And balancing. Now uh, GoPro and um, DJI didn't include the switch to uh, change the angle uh, so I'm going to try with a small screwdriver this is the first time me doing this I'm going to stick it in the top one and turn the dial and see if the uh, GoPro points uh, up or down Okay, so just to demonstrate what I'm doing here, I've cracked open Dave's uh, controller and just inside you can see uh, two yellow tabs, or just about see two yellow tabs. And the top hole, I'll put the screwdriver in and onto the uh, yellow tab. Now when I move this, it actually moves the X1 channel and you'll see the gimbal points up and down. Like so. I'm just going to get this level or well, thereabouts. Maybe just have it pointing down a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Just so uh, until Dave gets his uh, tabs, uh, he'll do uh, straight on shots like so. So, yeah, let's put all the screws back in this and we'll go for a test fly. Okay, so this is going to be the first takeoff with the gimbal. Uh, it's going to be the first full flight. I'm going to fly in attitude mode because we're inside here. Uh, let's see if the gimbal works. Okay, that's a short test flight because uh, the battery is flat. Dave, you gave me a flat battery, thank you. Let's 
put a new battery in and do a mirror test. Okay, so there you have that footage. Uh, now for the guys that have uh, radios like the Futaba T8J, I'll just quickly show you how to uh, use the uh, VR knob in the middle. Uh, turn on your radio, hold your plus button to go into the menu. We'll go left into AUX channel, then we're going to set channel 5, CH5, to VR, which stands for this VR knob here. Now you should be able to find that you can control your X1 channel now, uh, which is the gimbal looking up and down, I don't know why I'm doing that, but uh, yeah, that should work now uh, to make your gimbal look up and down and it's as simple as that, just back out of there, turn your gimbal knob, look up and down, okay so that's it, that's a real life setup of the uh, Zemus, uh, the only problem I had was with the uh, gimbal was looking slightly too high uh, and we don't have the uh, tabs here to control the gimbal pitch, make it look up and down. So, um, as you see, I stuck a screwdriver in, turned it, and you can change the pitch to make it look up and down. So that was the only uh, other problem. But that's a real life uh, build, if you want. That's what it's like to put a Zemus in there. Um, and that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, maybe answered a couple of your questions. Uh, take it easy, and I'll see you soon.